At first glance, Ulephone Paris looks like an iPhone 6 in terms of design and shape. That's certainly not a bad thing, since the design is very appealing with curved glass and a compact size. But what's behind this phone and how does it perform? Well, let's see and put it to the test in this video. I'm Styler and this is my full review of the Ulephone Paris from eFogShop.com. So the Ulephone Paris is very cheap and must be considered a budget model. However, it does have some few special highlights. For instance, it features both a notification LED and capacitive touch buttons with backlight. Good gaming performance and a pretty good camera. The overall build quality seems good, but still not overwhelming. It does have a full metal frame, 2.5D curved glass, a solid backside and a decent display. For the price of 122 US dollars, I guess you can't really expect much more. So the Paris comes with a 5 inch 720p HD display, which in my opinion is clear, vivid and sharp, but with a slightly yellow tone. It is powered by the MTK6753 octa-core, clocked at 1.3 GHz and has 4G LTE and band 20 support. It has 2 GB RAM and 16 GB ROM, dual SIM, micro SD card support and a notification LED and features a 13 megapixel Omnivision main camera with 1.8 aperture and 5 megapixel front camera that both provides good and decent quality. And at last it comes out of the box with Android 5.1 including two launchers where one is near stock and the other one is a themed launcher called U Launcher that can be customized. And uh, now let me show you the accessories uh, you get with the phone. So the phone comes in the box you see here in the background and it's just a gray box. Actually there are no specifications or anything uh, printed on the box, only the IMEI numbers on the back side. But you get here an extra screen protector and there will also be one pre-installed on the phone. You get here a standard uh, quick start guide in English, nothing special, it just explains the buttons and how to start up the phone and so on. You get some very cheap headphones. There's a flip circle cover. That's pretty nice because this one here seems to be in a okay good quality and also have a pretty nice design. And then there is also the wall charger and the micro USB cable. You can see that here. And this charger here kind of reminds me of something from Samsung has the same shape and design actually, just saying Ulephone. But we see this one here is pretty standard. It's a 5 volt, 1 amp, made in China. And here we have the USB cable. So the USB cable is flat, a flat cable. That's always nice, looks good. So that's it. Let's have a look at the phone design. On the top, we find the light and proximity sensor, the ear speaker together with the 5 megapixel front camera. The phone has a 5 inch HD display with good sharpness and brightness, but has a slightly yellow tone. Also, the glass is what they call 2.5D arc, meaning that it is curved in the edges just like on the iPhone 6. And uh, it also seems to be pretty scratch resistant. Ulophone claimed that it is Corning Gorilla Glass 3, but whatever this is true, I can't confirm or deny. In the bottom we find the menu home and back buttons, which all are illuminated. And unlike on the iPhone, the home button here is just a round circle and not a physical button. On the back side, which is removable and made of normal plastic, we find a 30 megapixel Omnivision rear camera together with a strong single LED flash. But what I don't really like is this pattern between the camera lens and the LED because dust and dirt is sticking to it really easy. Inside the phone we will find a removable 2250mAh battery manufactured by Sony and uh, in fact I did measure it and test it and found it to be real this time. In the bottom of the phone we find the rear speaker with average sound quality together with the microphone. On the right side we find the volume rocker together with the power button. 
In the top we find the 3.5mm headphone jack together with the USB port, which also have support for USB on the go, so you can connect USB accessories. And last on the left side we find absolute nothing, just the metal frame. So let's remove the rear cover, and uh, it's kind of tight actually. Let's see, we have support for a micro SD card and two micro SIM cards. We see the 2250 mAh battery, and that's it. And now let's check out the phone. So here we are on the standard lock screen and let me just unlock. You see the UI here. So this UI, uh, this is a special uh, launcher uh, that comes on the phone from the beginning. Actually there is two launchers, one uh, that looks near stock and this one here that also support themes. But let me first try to scroll a little bit here so we can check out the speed. And as you see, the launcher is pretty snappy and smooth, no lag at all. But there is no kind of app drawer in this one here, so all the apps will be placed on the desktop. Let's see, you can also hold and then get the widgets. Let's get back and uh, we also have a dedicated page for the camera see some pictures that would be showed here in the timeline and let me also show you the stock launcher actually you can change it here in home so you can see two launchers launcher 3 let's try to set this one here and let me show the stock look here you see now that it looks totally stock but this launcher do not support any kind of themes and you can't customize this one here in any way. But it does feature the app drawer as you know it. And uh, one thing also you have to notice is that the air gestures that the phone support in the launcher only will work in the stock launcher. So you see it activated here. This will not work in the themed U launcher. Let's get back to the U launcher, as they call it. And let's first have a look at the bottom. So you see there's a white light in the circle home button. And actually there are also the menu in this side and the back in this side, but you can't really see anything light up, just the home button in white. So this is just a touch button, a capacitive button, not a physical button as we know it from the iPhone. And uh, here in the top there will also be a notification LED. Let me just demonstrate this one with a uh, light manager. And uh, it only supports this one color. I haven't uh, found a way to activate more colors. So I believe there is only one color available. Let's try out the vibration tester. So the vibration is actually pretty nice in this phone here. I like how, how it feels in the hand. Very loud and hard. And let me just also show you the menu. So here we have some settings for, for the launcher, wallpaper, edit mode, ringtone, system settings and desktop settings. Change the page effect, particle effect, and so on. And here the wallpapers. Let me also show you the quick toggles. Let's check out the animation for 
auto rotation. So we see the animation confirming this is Android 5.1. You can also go directly inside Bluetooth and the Wi Fi. And let me also show you here the, the curved edge. You notice that the display is curved just like we know it from iPhone 6. Very nice. And uh, there's no edge when you put your finger around here. So it's very, very round. And that makes the phone uh, feel really good in the hand. No uh, sharp edges at all. Really nice. And uh, here you can see the viewing angles here first from the bottom. Very, very good viewing angles. Let's try from the side. Looks really, really nice and good. Very vivid and sharp here from the top. Display is very bright, good colors. Let's try out the LED flashlight. So this one here, yeah, it's a single LED and uh, for that the LED is actually okay, I would say. And uh, regarding the connectivity, the Wi-Fi and the network, you can see the signal here is good. Wi-Fi in top and also the network almost in top. And um, actually, uh, on the Yule phone B Touch 1 and 2, the Wi-Fi was not that strong. Uh, you had to be um, relatively close to the Wi-Fi router to get an OK signal. But uh, on this one here, uh, the Paris, the, the signal on the Wi-Fi is so much better. Still, it's not perfect. Um, it does uh, drop a bit in the signal if you get too far away. But the range and the speed seems to be optimized. So it's for sure improved in this model. So that's good. And uh, right now you see I'm on 3G. The phone of course also support 4G. But uh, my card here is only 3G. So that's why. Let's try out a test call. Let's check out the proximity sensor. So this is working. Let me check out the earpiece. The number you have dialed is not assigned. Die gewählte Nummer ist nicht vergeben. The number you have dialed is not assigned. Die gewählte Nummer ist nicht vergeben. Okay, so you could hear the sound from the ear speaker is okay and good. And now let's have a look inside the camera app. So the app is just the stock MediaTek camera app. What we see, it has support for picture in picture. Let's check out the autofocus. You can see it's working. We have the filters, color filters. And of course, we also have here gesture shot and HDR. We have the flashlight and the front facing camera. Let's see in the settings. Let me just scroll through these. They are normal standard and the same here we have 13 megapixels i believe these are interpolated we have standard 43 let's try full screen and we still see 30 megapixels so the reason why i say that, that they are interpolated is that on 90 percent of all china phones i would say um, they have interpolated the megapixels they are not real full megapixels and uh, it's really hard to to see or, or to check if it's real or not so that's why i must assume that they are interpolated when we are talking about a budget model to only 122 us dollars so that's why I'm saying this, so people will not get disappointed about the megapixels and think that these are real uh, full high resolution megapixels, because likely they are not. Then we have the video quality in fine or high, and fine is full HD, high is just HD. So that's it for the settings and the camera, very standard, very basic. You see the quality seems to be pretty nice. Good details and good colors. Sharpness is also very nice.
And uh, I have taken some samples using the rear camera sensor in order to show you how the device performs. Take a look at these samples and be the judge yourself. The link to the samples can be found in the video description. And uh, I also tested out the sound via the headphone jack and found that the sound is good. It's clear, it has good bass and uh, the sound is very loud. Especially uh, when uh, listening to music uh, on YouTube, uh, the volume can be really, really loud. So everything is good with the headphone jack and um, you can enjoy music, listening to techno, rock, pop and so on. And now let's go through the settings. Let's get into the phone settings and let's see. We have SIM cards, we have home. You can choose which launcher you want, the stock one or the themed launcher, the U launcher. We have display, support for mirror vision. And below here we also see font style, you can change the fonts. We have single hand operation. Change the scaling here, that's nice. Single hand settings. And let me try to activate this and let's see. Okay, so you can see it activated. Let's try for the right hand. Okay, so you can see, very, very small now. It's nice. Let's deactivate it again. Let's get back. Let's check inside storage. See total space. We see available near to nine gigabyte. SD card is supported and also USB on the go. And let's check out the RAM consumption. Let's see, we see 1.3 gigabyte of RAM is free. Totally the phone has two gigabyte of RAM. Let's see cached. And then we also find three finger screenshot. So you slide three fingers down to take a screenshot. We have action, so these are motion controls and also air gestures. Snap page is the, the launcher air control that you can change the page. We have flip to mute, pick up the call pick up to answer, speaker off, and so on. Then we just have standard settings, language and input. It's multi-language, so it will support all kind of languages. And we find the rest of the settings. I have enabled the developer options mode. We have about phone. Let's see the build number. Actually, I updated it because I got an OTA wireless update. And we see the Android version is 5.1, model number Paris, wireless update. So that's it for the settings. And we can also change the skin really quick with this button themes you can download more themes and these are free and local themes so uh, one thing i unfortunately uh, discovered is that uh, my version here uh, has clouding or a pressure mark uh, about here in the center of the bottom and let me just try to turn down the brightness all the way so you can see let me open up uh, here in the sms and maybe you notice here from distance that there is like a spot here it's really hard to see actually when the when the brightness is up but uh, as soon you turn the brightness down you can see like here also a little bit here in the in this side here 
and uh, I'm pretty sure that I haven't made these by myself because they were uh, in these bots from the beginning and uh, I have been really careful with the phone actually so these bots have been there from the manufacturer from the factory and um, it seems that the the quality insurance is not the best I think they could have tested this better and um, maybe it's not on all devices maybe it's again only the first batch or something like that but um, anyway I have to mention this in my test now I'm going to run some different test apps and a game. I will turn up for the background music, so check it out. So let's have a look at the live GPS test that I ran outside. I just recorded this so you could see the results. And um, this is the first time I ran the, the GPS, tried it out. So the first time will always uh, take some time to, to get the satellites in view and also to get the first lock and fix, so that's normal. And as you can see right now, uh, it slowly finds more satellites, uh, only on three right now. But uh, we just have to give it a little bit of time and uh, we will see now 11, 21. And the strongest signal I see is 42, so not that bad. We have here uh, GLONASS satellites and these are normal satellites, so support GLONASS, that's good. The accuracy is down on 5 meters, 12 in use, in view 21 now, it has a 3D fix. So it seems to be stable. We see the first fix time was on 33 seconds and it seems to be stable.
So we are now in the end of this review and I will now list my personal pros and cons. First of the pros, it has a notification LED and also capacitive touch buttons with backlight so that's a really good thing. The camera and the LED flash is above average I would say and does well, especially when considering the low price. The phone design is nice and comfortable in the hand, but the back can be a little bit slippery. The button placement is perfect and it is very easy to use with one hand. And even also inside the phone settings support a feature called one-handed operation. The SoC provides good performance and it is fine for standard games. And uh, regarding the cons, the charging is unfortunately uh, kind of slow. And uh, I actually only measured the charger to charge with about 0.9 amp, so below the promised 1 amp. Another thing is that um, at low volume, the sound is kind of boggy. Uh, when on the lowest, you can hear it partly, sometimes low and sometimes higher. It keeps changing the actual volume by itself. Uh, I especially noticed this when watching YouTube videos with the lowest volume. Also on my phone here I noticed some uh, screen clouding, uh, I'm not sure if it will be on all phones or maybe I just got unlucky and got one with a bad screen but um, it looks like a pressure mark in the bottom center of the display so I think the quality could be better. The rear speaker only provides sound quality below average I would say it could be much better. The battery is kind of small, but I measured the milliampere hour to be real and with light usage one day is possible. Also uh, it has very few built-in sensors and uh, I found out that the display only support 3 point multi-touch, so not the best but that's pretty normal for a budget model. And last there is no double tap to wake or off screen gestures, but still it does support some motion and air gestures. That's it for the review, remember also to check out my blog, you'll find the link in the video description. If you have any questions please comment below, give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>